With suicide figures on the rise, is it time to deal with depression in Ireland? It's when you lose touch with reality, and you can lose touch with reality through incredible strain. Uh, George Hook, um, listening to Phyllis there, um, your own wife, Ingrid, would not have known anything about the, the terrors you were going through, would she? No, you see, I, I think Phyllis can be very hard on herself in terms of saying I should have known or noticed. Nobody, I think, says, uh, hello, I'm going to uh, die by my own hand next Friday. That's a minuscule thing. In my particular case, you know, it was a dark November night. I went for a drive down Don Leary because I didn't want to go home because this fella's waiting, the bill's paid. So I walked down the, uh, the Don Leary Pier and I got to the end and then I'm sitting there and it's about 11 o'clock at night. And I think, you know, if you went in there, there wouldn't be any more bill collectors. So there was nothing in my sort of thing which said I'm going to do this. But I think that's relatively unimportant, to be honest. It was a big time, obviously, in my life, but had it been pulled out of, of the bay the following morning, Ingrid, uh, the rugby team I was coaching, the people I was working with, was, which I was only talking to him last week. And he, he was, was in great, great form. I wasn't telling anybody. Yeah. So I don't think people should beat themselves up and say, I should have noticed. Every day, like in my radio programme, there will be days where I won't be able to go in to the production meeting. Still, and the team, to this oh, yeah, day? To this day. And the team know, like, so they'll know George is in trouble today. We've got to get him through this. There are other triggers. See, I understand it better now. Funny enough, America is a trigger. So last week... I'm in New Hampshire for the Republican primary and I'm going up by 93 North and Mark and Joe are in the car with me and they suddenly see that shift into it's a crap programme and you know we can't get this right and suddenly so I understand it better every three months the the results for the radio audience come out and I'm lying at home with the duvet over my head like I can't get out of the bed until I somebody rings me and it I mean it's, it's a okay. bit of a, an internal joke now we have to ring George to get him out of bed to tell him his numbers haven't disappeared, you know. But, <clears throat> but George, was there a, a, a period in your life that was so stressed that it created this in you, or do you think it's genetic? Do you think it's familial? Because um, you know, there was a time when you had a rough time with businesses going wallop, the, the building society trying to take your home. Well, I would have fought the Irish permanent law four times, like four for times. eviction. Um, but, I mean, there's tons of people go through stress. I don't buy the stress thing personally you know i i think that people some people cope and some people don't i i spent my whole life worrying about genetic transfer my father spent a year and a half in st patrick's hospital my aunt finished up in the court mental asylum that that the minister would know very well undergoing electroconvulsive th therapy i've always been scared of that that's always worried me uh, i carry it around but i cope but you see what the real thing is, one in three of us in this room is going to experience depression. In some shape or form, one in three of us. Women, four times more likely than men. Now, you're interesting, you talk about road safety. You know, that the government will roll out Gabo and the commissioner and they'll say, wonderful, 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 look, our, our, our road safety deaths are down. Look at the money they have spent on that, on multiple, on what they've spent on suicide prevention. Where's the champion for suicide? Where's the guy who's a walking out there championing it. it the other thing is that between uh, uh, over a five year period the, the people in, in institutions who work, went home would, be let, would have been reduced by less than 5% in roughly the same period the number of young people committed rose by 22% depression and mental illness costs the country 2.5 billion per annum. Imagine if we could fix that, we wouldn't need the Troika. But what we don't do, I'm sure what Phyllis's husband ultimately didn't do sadly, and what I never did, to this very day, I have never spoken to a member of my family and said, I'm in deep doo-doo, help me out here. 
and that's part of the problem that people that is do not... That the single biggest part of the problem. Now, I just want to say to our viewers, if you're affected by any of the issues on this programme tonight, uh, we'll have contact details for helplines and support organisations on our screens during the programme and also on Airtel page 706. These are some of them. Console, which is the 24-hour suicide prevention helpline. It's a free phone, 1-800-247-100. Uh, the suicide bereavement line is 1-800-201-890. That's a free phone as well. And you can get them on console.com. Ie and the Samaritans number is 1850 60 90 90. Uh, belong to uh, dot org is the website there. Aware.ie and Pieta.ie are also uh, useful websites uh, that you can log on to.